Today we're going to talk about some of the most important aspects of living here in Duluth, Minnesota and what you can expect and plan around and some of it we have never gone over before. I'm going to go in depth on a lot of it and you're going to want to stay until the end because I'm going over some of the most asked about questions that you really just can't find online and that's why this video today is going to be so important so stay tuned you don't want to miss anything. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cody Oakland, a real estate agent here in Duluth, Minnesota. If you're new here and interested in all things Duluth, hit the subscribe button. And if you guys are even thinking about making the move here and buying a home, reach out anytime at the email or phone number on the screen below. I would love to help you out. I love it hearing from everybody. But real quick, let's talk about Duluth, Minnesota. Well, today we are gonna cover so many important topics and you might be wondering why today is so important. Well, I am so excited to go over some of the main aspects of living here that draw a lot of people, I get a lot of questions on, and that you're gonna be able to really have some expectations on what you're definitely gonna run into here. But one item I do wanna to start today talking about is really the outdoors in our area. And I mean a number of different aspects of, of the outdoors, and not just the activities you can do, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit here as well, but really, Duluth is just built around the outdoors and that's we're built around the train like the Duluth Hill and that's part of the reason we have such amazing views and such unique property setups. Um, I, you know we're not the only city with a hillside like that but we do have Lake Superior right out in our front door there so it's very cool there's a lot of properties you might have a small lake view of. Um, and different things like that but it is part of living here and it's kind of a, a unique aspect because if you live in a bigger city which I, I have lived in a bigger city before as well it was not for me <laughs> but uh, it just felt like in a bigger city every, you had to make a point to go to a lot of different places and the parks were just it was a whole different feel where things are very natural here in a lot of ways um, and not just like in the city of Duluth but a lot of what surrounds us because there's so much within 20, 30 minutes, an hour of the Duluth area that you can just explore. You can spend years exploring all this different area, which I think is very cool. You'll hear all kinds of stories about the outdoors in Duluth, whether it's uh, winter related, non-winter, you know, it's all really cool depending on what you like to do. So it's very dependent on that, of course, but I do want to talk a little bit more about Lake Superior and what it means for the area. I know we talk a little bit about this uh, in a lot of videos, but it's important to talk about here as well because it is such an important aspect. It draws a lot of tourism here because of the views and you know with the sheer size of Lake Superior and the views it provides and everything and the activities you can do on it. You know you're gonna see boats coming in and out whether they're fishing, doing tours, uh, you know, boats hauling stuff into the harbor area. That's really big. People love watching down in the, the harbor area when they come into town. And it's really cool. Uh, we're not necessarily going to go into the Canal Park area because we talk a lot about that. But because we're talking about the outdoors here, down in the Canal Park area, besides the harbor, there's the Lake Walk. And I love going on the Lake Walk. Uh, I don't make it down there nearly as often as I want to. But it's really easy to get to and just go for a walk. You can rent stuff. You can go for a bike ride. You'll see people going down there all the time. Um, people say the locals don't go down there. I know a ton of locals that go down there. It's a lot of fun. You don't have to use the entire eight mile stretch. <laughs> I My personal favorite is just kind of going down to the Canal Park area and whether I just go down um, to the first corner or all the way down to like Leaf Erickson Park. My wife and I once in a while will just like to go down uh, from the Canal Park area of the Lake Walk to uh, Portland Malt Shop and get get a, uh, a malt and head back. It's nice and easy, um, not a lot to it, but it's just fun uh, to people watch and just taking the views. You can go right down to Lake Superior in certain spots. It's a lot of fun. And some days we'll go over to Park Point. Uh, you hear me talk about Park Point all the time. And that is because it is supposed to be the world's longest freshwater sandbar. That's a pretty big deal to have right here in Duluth. And I would say one of the main aspects of utilizing Park Point is the, the freshwater, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the sandbar 
uh, along Lake Superior on the main body of Lake Superior there. There's a, the harbor side where there's waterfront as well, but the Lake Superior side is what you see a lot of pictures and video of. And it's free to use. There's different access points like the Park Point Park is the where the biggest parking lot is and access point by the beach house. Uh, sometimes they'll have a lifeguard on duty uh, depending on the hours of summertime there. But very cool. Um, that is a really big aspect of just living here is what we've built around Lake Superior. Um, one, one aspect too I, I used to do every Sunday. I've gotten kind of away from that a little bit unfortunately just with scheduling. But every Sunday for years I would go up the uh, North Shore scenic route <laughs> and just drive. And uh, I wouldn't do the whole thing every time but it's just mostly along Lake Superior so you get a great view for a lot of it same deal there's different stopping points so you can hike down to the lake a little bit um, or just look over uh, certain uh, spots as well there's some parking and uh, it actually has shoulders on the road too over there so you're not just on like a cliff edge or anything when you're driving um, so it's a really easy route that takes you all the way to the two harbors which is um, just a cool little little uh, area and it's really cool in fall time when we get storms you can see out to the lake and sometimes it'll be you'll see really cool waves and uh, lightning and winter weather can be really cool when you see the the ice along everything so the scenery is just awesome um, and that's a really big part of living here like we were talking about but there's so many other aspects like uh, right in the city of Duluth we talk a lot about how many they have over a hundred parks and I talk a lot about uh, the Hartley Park area on that side because I lived over in the Woodland neighborhood. Um, and then uh, we went over, my wife and I used to go to Hartley Park as much as we could. Very cool area. You know, you don't always have to make a big adventure to go or make a point to go places. It's so easy to get around to different spots in Duluth. Um, depending on if you're on the far end of town getting to the opposite end, it might take you a little bit just because of the speed limit. It's not necessarily the distance, it's usually the speed limit that'll uh, kind of slow you down in our area. But like Hartley, you know, there's maintained areas, there's um, where, where more people are walking, and then there's kind of smaller trails off the, the beaten path a little bit where they're somewhat maintained, and you'll see more people like mountain biking and uh, stuff like that on those um, and some of the trails like that you know when they go off the beaten path a little bit you'll notice there's probably going to be more bugs you might go through some swampy land and that's just kind of how the trail systems work as you get more and more out into the woods uh, especially in northern Minnesota that's that's part of having wetland area here but there's so many maintained areas uh, not all of our parks within the city limits are going to be fully maintained all the time uh, that's just part of having that many, but there's so many to choose from and it's it's really easy to get to a lot of them and there's typically at least a small parking lot to, <laughs> surrounding the area, if not a uh, shoulder on the road to park on to right next to it. So very cool to have all that and the Spear Hiking Trail goes through, uh, 43 miles of it goes through Duluth. Um, that's a really big deal to have here in our city because it actually goes up to Canada for from here for hundreds of miles up to Canada and they have their own website uh, for the spear hiking trail and that's another thing I really enjoy is if you can't think of something to do for the day it's really easy to find spots to hike so even if it's the same hiking trail depending on the time of year the scenery could be totally different whether it's the fall leaves or maybe the leaves aren't on at all and you can see through everything a lot more so maybe you have a view of Lake Superior in certain spots where you didn't previously um, so you can stay busy for years finding all these different spots but you know you can find different sections of the trail on the, the website and just go and adventure and try them out and the train's going to be all kinds of setups here because um you know we have a lot of hilly area so there's going to be some flatter parts and then there's going to be a lot of hills that give you great views when you get to the top but you know they could be a little rocky walking on sometimes so it's, it's going to give you a variety of different experiences here for sure. And same for like if you go up to Ely's Peak and uh, that end of town, you know, we've got trail systems around it. But getting up to Ely's Peak, you know, it's it's a peak. So it's going to 
uh, shoot up and it's uh, it's pretty rocky in spots but it gives you a really cool view on that end of town uh, we do a lot of mountain biking around here you know we've got an awarded trail system for mountain biking that connects different parts of Duluth um, for miles and miles it's it's a really cool trail system uh, there, because of the Duluth hill here though you're gonna have a lot of hillier terrain for mountain biking as well so that can be a really fun aspect um, but we should talk a little bit more about winter as well uh, for winter activities we'll talk more about like the the weather and different stuff you'll run into but when it comes to winter activities this might be new for some of you if you've never dealt with winter before or had enough of uh, uh, snow or ice uh, and cold weather to deal with to do some of these activities that are only available when <laughs> you get some more extreme temperatures so uh, once snowmobiling that might be new for a lot of people we've got designated trail areas and lakes and stuff you can snowmobile on um, same for like ice fishing and whatnot. So I would say the biggest change, um, it really depends on how much snow we get because these trail systems will be somewhat dependent on how much snow we get because they're going to be really rough if we don't have a lot. And that's not really fun to snowmobile on. Some people might <laughs> differ from that opinion, but it can be brutal if we don't have a, a good snow year, which not every year we get a lot of snow like last year we did break the snow record but this year looks to be a little they're planning on it being a little more tame they said but or predicting but we'll see what actually happens and a big change for anybody looking to like use lakes for activities when they freeze over you know there's all kinds of groups and you can call the DNR and stuff to find out like ice levels um that's a really big important aspect because the ice levels are going to determine you know where you want to go so you always have to verify ice levels on the lakes you're probably going to see people out here with their ice houses out but you're also going to see them pulling like all of, a lot of the ice houses out with like their big trucks and stuff and that is only because they go out when there's enough ice but you always have to be extremely cautious when it comes to utilizing frozen lakes um, but you're going to see a lot of that around here and that might be totally new to what you're used to um, but it's a lot of fun and we've also got Spirit Mountain here. Um, so for anybody mainly looking to like ski or snowboard, that's a really big uh, winter place here. Um, so you don't always have to leave the area to go to like Lutzen or somewhere else or like the mountains uh, to get some of that action uh, for skiing and snowboarding. So I think it's amazing to have it here. Um, I, I wish it got used even more, but that's, that's kind of how some of that stuff goes. Um, and I would also say for cross-country skiing, we also have a ton of different trails um, around the area just in Duluth and some in different spots not far from Duluth. So you can definitely go cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, all that stuff, um, and some aspects. Like we put a lot of outdoor events on even in wintertime, whether it's ice fishing events, snowmobiling, uh, races. So if you want to get and watch any like racing action for snowmobiles, four wheelers, uh, dirt bikes, all that stuff, um, they'll do races all the time and just normal uh, community gatherings for standard outdoor events. Um, so usually it's a combination where they'll have heated tents or maybe we'll be next to a building that's heated um, so you can go in and out. But sometimes it's just outside and, you know, you just got to deal with the, uh, the weather and plan accordingly. Now, since we're talking about northern Minnesota and what it's like to live here, we have to talk about the weather. It's such an important part of living here in our area. And there's a number of different parts that come along with that that we have to talk about. One being the next to Lake Superior here, the lake effect weather. Uh, that's one of the reasons you see so many people writing about living in our area and moving here for the climate, that climate migration, all that stuff. Because it's so interesting how it works. It doesn't mean we don't get, you know, some extreme weather here. Um, but it's certainly way different than some other areas um, because maybe you're running, trying to get away from and running from like wildfires, hurricanes, uh, severe droughts in certain areas. It just kind of depends on what you're used to. Um, but the lake effect provides some defense against like tornadoes. You don't really see those here. It doesn't mean it can't happen, but it makes the news when it, we even get a funnel. Um, it can make the weather a little unpredictable. So sometimes, you know, you'll be listening to the news, reading about it, 
and they'll predict maybe a major storm, whether it's a snowstorm or thunderstorm, maybe it won't happen. Like we lucked out last winter on one storm. Uh, other parts of the state got hit, but we didn't really get more than like a snow dusting, I would say. Um, so that was really cool, but it, it causes some flexibility in what they predict on the weather. Um, and sometimes storms can come out of nowhere, uh, typically more like rainstorms sometimes, but um, it could also mean some different areas will get a little bit more snowfall than others. And we're not talking like if there's a range, usually it's within like a couple inches they're predicting. And some parts of Duluth might get a little bit different and some parts like closer to the lake, some of those areas, maybe the snow will melt a little faster. Uh, there's just some interesting aspects of living next to a big lake like that. And hands down, I get probably the most questions on winter and a number of things you have to keep in mind. I, obviously, you're probably looking into snowfall. The types of snow, we get all kinds of types of snow that f happen here. And a couple things to keep in mind with that. You know, the stuff you're probably typical, usually seeing is like the fresh powder stuff. But we get some of that wet and heavy snow where there's moisture mixed in. Like last December, we got a lot of that right away. And you really got to stay on top of snow removal. Sometimes if we get a lot at once, you keep an eye on clean, clearing off your roof. Um, some people don't have to deal with that. But, you know, depending on how much we get to at once, and especially if it happens in a short amount of time, you have to stay on top of that snow removal because you don't want things to ice up and especially like your sidewalk, your porch, uh, your driveway, all that stuff. If it ices up, it's so much more painful to deal with <laughs> later on. Um, so that's definitely gonna be something on your radar. A lot of us will have a snow blower, even if it's a smaller snow blower, it can be a really big deal for snow removal. Um, because if we get a lot at once, or if we get a year like last year where we got a lot of snow over the course of the whole winter, shoveling it is gonna really wear you down. Um, and maybe that's all you want to use is just to have a shovel for snow removal, but I highly recommend at least having a snow blower. Um, if the bigger the driveway, you know, maybe you're going to have a, like an ATV with a small snow plow, maybe a truck with a plow. Uh, maybe you're going to hire it out. We have a lot of services you can hire out for people to come and shovel or snow blow or, or uh, they'll have a plow truck. It just kind of depends on uh, the scenario for your property, but Hands down, I would say the biggest thing is getting used to snow removal. Um, if you're coming from an area without a real winter, you're going to be buying more clothes than you're used to having for sure. Um, you know, maybe you don't even have a jacket. <laughs> I, I've run into that before. Um, so just keep all this in mind. Um, and we have a lot of this in stores. Some of it is seasonal, but so we get a lot more in winter for winter clothes. But um that's really big here. Vehicle uh, is really going to depend. Like I grew up, um, I, I drive an SUV now, but uh, of course having something that's all wheel drive or four wheel drive or bigger vehicle is always easier in winter. But um, it's not necessar necessarily needed. Uh, like you'll see small vehicles here all the time. Um, like I drove a, a Ford Focus. That was my first car. I had it for a decade and I drove that all over uh doesn't mean i didn't get stuck here and there <laughs> but it just kind of depends having good tires is a really big deal um knowing if roads are plowed or not you know that's going to be on the news and people are going to be talking about you know, certain roads that are iced up so getting you knowing you know how to drive is going to take a little getting used to um hasn't really taken everybody that long they're still getting used to it a little bit you know their first winter but um we have a lot of plows out, so you're not just driving through like four feet of snow or anything here. We have a lot of plow trucks that are always going, especially um, uh, in some, like in the city of Duluth, they have some priority routes. So there's snow emergency routes for the main roads that get plowed first and then kind of the side roads and then alleyways. Um, so it just kind of depends. If we get a lot of snow at once, sometimes they'll get backed up. So keep that in mind. Um, Usually the main roads will be taken care of, but as winter drags on, if we get a lot of snow, I mean, some of the sidewalks and stuff might be covered up completely. So they have to get out and eventually get a dump truck going next to it and digging out snow and putting it into the dump truck to haul it off. So we have tons of options to take care of our snow. Um, it just depends on 
what kind of um, snowstorm we're having. And then the Duluth Hill, um, you're probably going to read a ton about the Duluth Hill in, in wintertime. The steepness level will vary. It stretches for a long ways. Um, some people don't have to deal with driving on the hill at all. It just kind of depends on where you like to hang out, work, where you live, all that stuff, um, if you're even dealing with it. But I'd say a big aspect to living here is knowing, keeping up on the weather when we're having a snowstorm, when things are icy, especially when we're getting like that 40 below weather and maybe it just snowed a little bit and it's a little slick on the roads. I mean, they're always salting the roads, but it doesn't mean things don't get slippery here. So it's always good to watch out. There's different routes you can take. Um, if we're getting a big snowstorm, keep this in mind too. Like uh, sometimes you want to plan ahead and buy like extra groceries and everything ahead of time if you can. So that's that's part of kind of planning for these big snowstorms. Um, so this is all stuff that you're going to run into as you live here. Even in like summertime, uh, there's certain aspects like depending on the season, like this last summer was drier than normal. So you might not, your grass might not grow that much. I wasn't mowing for a good portion of the summer. I just kind of let my grass stay long so it didn't destroy the grass. And, but the summertime, the start of the summer, I would say it wasn't that bad. It, I was still mowing regularly. We we're getting some rain. Then it got drier for a long while until like August sometime. And when it's drier like that, you're gonna see the water levels drop and like some of the lakes and stuff. There's gonna be some uh, fire alerts. So maybe they'll have a fire ban so you can't have any campfires for a bit to prevent the chance of anything. Or maybe um, you need to, typically they want a permit over a certain size um, for, for a campfire if it's a certain size as well. So just keep all this stuff in mind. Um, you can find a lot of info on like the Minnesota DNR website as well. Um, we can get hail that in the Midwest in general. That's a, a one of the bigger like summer storms you'll get is like hail. And uh, I don't see like I don't remember seeing any of this past summer. Maybe there was one, some. Um, sometimes it's really small. If you're getting a crazy storm, sometimes it can be really big hail. It just kind of depends. Um, you, we talked about thunderstorms, all that stuff, but for sure winter is probably the biggest thing you'll run into for planning uh, planning around if you're new to winter. Well, there you go. There's a little bit more information about Duluth, Minnesota, what it's like living here. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos about Duluth, Minnesota every week. And as always, if you're looking to buy or sell a home here in Duluth or the surrounding areas, reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below. I would love to help you out.